If you unwrap your eyes like this, then you're doing it all wrong. In this video, I'll show you how we optimize game UVs inside of Blender and Maya. Hey, I'm Virtus, a character art director and university lecturer in the games industry. This is the second video in a series of making eyes for games. The unwrapping techniques I'll show you are the ones that we use on active projects today. If you want to see how Blender is used in the games industry, make sure you turn on your notifications. Okay guys, so here's the target render. Now this is comprised of high poly and low poly. So what we'll be doing is extracting low polys inside of Blender and then also unwrapping. Got a really cool strategy and technique to increase some resolution inside of the unwrap. But we also need to get both of those parts inside of Substance Painter to bake it down and then also texture the entire thing from scratch. So the shader is slightly more complex, but we'll also be working on a secondary mesh, which is the cornea, like the outer eye. That'll also be inside of Substance Painter. And finally, basically how to set that scene up inside of Marmoset with the multiple eyes and also some cool techniques along the way. So in the first phase, we actually made the high poly inside a ZBrush. If you want to know how to do that, check the video before this one. It will definitely take you to this stage. So very quickly, only have visible the high poly you want to export in the subtools over here. Come up to export in the top right. Name it I underscore high. So it's a good habit to get into for the baking process later. And then change this to an FBX. You can also use an OBJ for some more raw data, but FBX is usually pretty good. Okay, so we can tick off the high poly that's ready to bake. Now we're going to move on to the low poly. So under normal circumstances, we would do things like quad draw, retopology on top of a character. Thankfully for this, we've already got the geometry from when we were sculpting. So hopefully you should have a bit of history in your high poly. Just go all the way back to when you first started. You should have something like a shape like this. If not, completely easy to reform it. All it was was bringing in a primitive in the center of the world and then cutting it with a clip curve from the side. So don't worry if you don't have it because we'll line that all up in Blender anyway, so it doesn't matter. So the same process, you come to export with your low poly selected. Try keep the naming consistency. This time we're going to call it underscore low. And it's important that this is all lowercase. So in Blender, we're going to get both the high poly and low poly in the same scene. The high poly is just there to guide the low poly. So we know that it's correctly aligned. If there's any adjustments, we can come back in here. So to get the files in, come up to File, Import, and import the FBX, both of those. So in ZBrush, if you remember, we made three separate objects that's going to be important for the shader in Marmoset. So it's the outer eye, which is the cornea, and we have the inner eye, which houses that hole. And then basically to fill that hole, we have another floating object, which is the iris. And that's just to make sure there's no back culling or overdrawing when we get into a games engine. So guys, if you're using Maya, I'll also guide you at the same time. The settings are pretty much the same. I'll just mention it. So the inner eye is going to be the most important. We actually have to UV unwrap this so it can receive bake information and also texture. Second one is the outer eyes, the cornea. It's not as important because we're going to put a tiler ball. Because we're putting a tiler ball on, it doesn't need a UV unwrap. So it's a weird concept to get around with students to start with. But just in case, sometimes it's worth doing a very quick unwrap. On the iris, we're going to have no texture information whatsoever. So this will only contain a material. And in Games Engine, materials are very cheap because it's only just math. So today, only what we're focusing on is the center in eye. So usually retopology is quite a long process for characters. Thankfully, we get this instantly. So if you are studying and learning how to do retopology, I've actually made three retopology cheat sheets, hacks and tips and common problems to help you guys in the world of retopology. So definitely download those in the link below. But for now, we can move straight on to the unwrap. So I usually like to tear this island off as my unwrap. Or you can just change your tab settings to UV editing. It's pretty much the same with Maya. So to start, we want to make sure we're in edit mode. Just click one of the faces, press A, it's going to select everything. Usually what I like to do is get everything in the UV space first, no matter what. So if you press U on the hotkeys, you want to click project from view. So it's basically going to paste our UVs onto the scene. Inside of Maya, what I usually do is click the planar or you can either do a camera spaced one, which is exactly the same as we've done here. So just making sure that all the faces are in the UV scene. So we really want the highest possible resolution for the inside of the eye. So we're going to incorporate some interesting UV packing techniques. But first we need to split the eye in two. So in edge mode, hold down Alt and then click 
one of the edges. Press U on the keyboard and then we'll come to mark seam. So it's telling Blender that we want a cut incision or basically a seam there. In Maya, quite simple as well, only this time it's called cut. So in theory, we've split the front half and the back half. We just need to represent that in the UV unwrap. So click on the UV side, press U, and then you can press U again, but also just press unwrap. And this should display it side by side. So for some people or people who are new and are unexperienced, uh, they might just put this into the engine and start texturing on this. The problem is we're wasting quite a lot of texture space. And texture base is very important in games engines because it's our budget. It's what relates to the frames per second, the sort of glorious thing in games. Now, if you imagine we were trying to texture and paint some eye information here, we'd be working in a really low resolution, just like you would have a low resolution in Photoshop or you're watching a low resolution YouTube video. It's exactly the same. So the target for us and what we're going to go for is basically try and get this center point as big as physically possible. And there's really cool ways to expand this and make use of most of the islands. So I'll explain that as we go along and you'll, you'll pick up a lot here. So to initiate the mode of 3D origami or reverse origami and unwrapping, first I like to put a texture on it just to see what effects our UVs are having on the 3D asset. So for me, I use a plugin in Blender called Text Tools. Really, really simple to install. You just download it, come up to the settings and then load the plugin in. And this one's quite nice because you can just click check a map. And after you've clicked check a map, it applies a texture which is really useful and convenient for unwrapping. We just need to change the viewport shading mode to shaded and we can see it here. So for you guys in Maya, there's also a checker mode map. It's actually a checker as a button. Alternatively, if you don't want the plugin or <laughs> You just want to work with base blender which i don't really advise you can change the texture by bringing your own sort of textures up in here in the material okay so to start we're going to work on the most important part of the eye which is the front so if i hover over inside of face mode and press l it's going to expand to that selection basically the island of the uv you guys in maya have an option to select islands as well but first i'm just going to move out the back eye because we are going to replicate this later so basically the first stage of making this amazing, there's about two or three stages. I'll show you all of them. So come up to UVs and under UVs, we're going to pack the island. You can change the margin, which is just basically how close to the edge it is. We don't want it pixel perfect to the edge because that's going to cause problems in the game's engine. So experiment with some kind of margin. You should be able to see a separation and that's all that matters. For you guys in Maya, it's going to be called layout in the bottom right. And you can change the edge padding or shell padding to eight or four. So there's a nice bit of space there. We could probably expand it a teeny bit more just to make, make use of all the pixels. For that, we can just hold S or press S and then bring it towards the end. Or just use a much, much lower margin when the option comes up. Okay, so already you will see that we now have more texture resolution on the eye. And that's because we increased and expanded the size of the UV. That's pretty good. But the thing is, it's increased the resolution all across the model. And to be honest, around the outer edge, we're not so interested in this area because all the texture information is going to be in the center of the eye. So next, we're going to move on to increasing the resolution here without breaking the borders and making sure that everything fits in. So this is somewhat of an advanced technique, but it's very easy to implement, which is why it's uh, super effective for you guys to watch this video. And it's nice and simple. Okay, but before that, we can't forget about the lonely backside of the eye. Of course, it's going to be inside of a character, so we don't really care about it too much. Some people scale it all the way down and then they put it off into the corner or they split it into four pieces and put them in the corner. I wouldn't suggest that there's a far better alternative. It's going to look a little strange at first, but I'll explain the theory. This is this is how we do UV packing inside of a games engine to get maximum resolution. So with the back side of the eye selected, we'll go through the same workflow. So we'll pack the back of the eye using Pack Island. Hold S, you can rescale it. Inside of Text Tools, there's a useful button called Fill, and that'll basically expand the UV to the edge of the UV. For you guys in Maya, I believe it's called Normalize. So currently you'll see we've actually got two different sets of UVs on top of each other. So this would usually be okay if we were applying different textures or materials to them. So we can go through that later in terms of advanced characters. Now, if we were going to bake this straight away, there are going to be a couple of issues because this is overlapping in the important zero to one space. So this zero to one space is basically the active area 
for software to do all of its calculations. So we basically have to take the back of the eye and move it to the side. So we're going to move it to the side with a factor of one. For you guys who are new, it might feel a little bit weird, but I'll explain it in a second. So hold control and just make sure that it's in a second version of the UV to the side. Now, something kind of strange has happened. You'll see that it's kept the texture. So even though our texture is in this zero to one area, you would think that if we moved it off to the side, that this suddenly would become untextured. But that's not really the case because parts of games engines and parts of 3D software is that whenever we apply a texture to the UV set, it basically tiles infinitely. So in every single direction, no matter where we put it, the texture is repeated. So as games artists, we can basically use that to our advantage. This area here is the active space that we do all the painting and all the baking and things like that. And then the other areas, we just use these as convenient zones to put some random pieces of geometry. So for example, with our back of the eye, we're not really fussed about unique textures for that. So we can just replicate it. And what will happen is any texture on number one will be printed onto number two. So you can actually see that in the final render. You know, if I come to the back, this is the front of the eye. We have a similar resolution and on the back of the eye, we have pasted the same sort of texture. So this is only so we can have some high fidelity on the sides. So guys, the next step is by far one of my favorites. It involves loads of colors. It's really technical, but also at the same time, it's quite easy to do. And the final results are super nice to increase our fidelity. But before that, if you're loving the sort of game art world, there's loads of content on the channel for you to catch up on in terms of high poly, low poly unwrapping, and just getting into the games industry in general. If you're looking to take it to the next level, there's also the YouTube membership. So in here's just slightly more detailed videos. For example, last month released a series on character retopology. So making the perfect retopology. Every month we have loads of questions and answers, personal feedback for your projects. And there's also a private Discord community where everyone's sharing knowledge. If you click join below, you can catch up on hundreds of hours of videos already instantly. Plus I release free downloadable content for you guys and to all the members. So see why hundreds of members have already joined. Click join below and I'll meet you in the discords. For those videos, I think the most interesting one for you guys is like skin texturing in Unreal Engine. There's also a series on UDIMs, which is very similar for these UVs. But for our challenge here, we basically want to expand the center and radiate outwards so we've got some more texture resolution. In our UV section, first we're gonna add a really nice overlay. Scroll down slightly to UV editing and we can display stretch. So what this is doing is it's displaying areas of compression and release in the UV. So if you imagine it's actually impossible to completely flatten half a sphere. So we're bound to get some distortion. You can see the distortion on the left side inside of the boxes. So in games, it's basically inevitable. In fact, we actually use distortion in interesting ways and that's how we're gonna do it now. So first we want to make sure that UV sync is activated. So it's this little toggleable up here. So in the 3D selection, we're gonna make a ring border selection. Might be easier just to change the viewport shading to flat. So select face, hold Alt and then click the next corresponding face. It's gonna do a continuous ring if you've got some quads. And now we're gonna expand this selection. So for you guys on the numpad, it's plus. So just do it all towards the border where we're gonna have some texture information. And here's where it comes really apparent how much distortion there's gonna be and also how much little texture space is being used for the center of the iris. So just so I can see things a little bit more clearly, I'm gonna deactivate the display stretch. And now we're going to use some proportional editing to change this while keeping all our distortions in checks. For you guys in Maya, it's called soft selection. So you can turn on proportional editing with this button. It's also the hotkey zero, so you should get used to that. So with that feature activated, something interesting happens when I press G and move the center around. You'll see that both the 3D texture is moving, but there's also this almost like this fall off of moving all the vertices. If I turn it off, you'll see that this is how it's meant to work. So it basically separates, but we don't want that. We want a nice soft selection. So while you are making these moves, if you hold the scroll wheel, it basically changes the area of effect for this. We're gonna use this in an interesting way. So if you hold S, this is going to be scaling up the center. And for you guys, what you'll be doing is you'll scroll up and down with the mouse wheel. And you're basically trying to get this center circle 
representatively as big as possible while not trying to have too much overlap around the sides. So here I've expanded it with proportional editing on. So I've changed the scroll wheel and I've just tried to put it right to the border until faces are about to squish. And that's probably the maximum we can get so far. Could probably push it a little bit further by doing a smaller selection and then expanding it more. But to be honest, this is totally fine. So if you look on the 3D asset, you can see the effect that it's had. It's distorted the parts of the eye that we're not so interested in. So all of this distorted area is going to be hidden inside of the player's head. But now we have an increase in resolution on the center of the eye. So loads of texture information can be held here. You know, in games and cinematics, it's not too dissimilar to people actually like separate the entire UV island and have that take up an entire texture space. Uh, the only problem is there you have to then start working with seams and it can come a little bit confusing. But this is the perfect way to do it inside of games. So now this is pretty much ready to be baked and we'll move over into substance. Just final checks before you send that in. Do this with all your characters and every single asset is double check the borders. Maybe something accidentally split when we were doing proportional editing. I think on this side, for example, we're starting to have a little bit of overlap. So that will cause problems in the bake, in the texture, and then we'd have to go back through the entire workflow. So really important to check it now. For this, I'll just use a fill from the text tools. And then I usually like to scale it down just a little bit. And this helps eventually when you guys get used to things like scaling, MIP mapping, and engine innies. <laughs> go through those later. So now you have the perfect industry standard unwrap. I wouldn't stop here. You can take the red pill or the blue pill. Click this video to see how we texture this eye inside of Substance Painter. Or if you're a member, you can click here and download all the eye content so you can have it on your character projects and just investigate how this was basically made. So I'll see you in Substance Painter. Definitely check it out. Loads of nice texturing masks in there and also how to export in the perfect ways you'll see that all on the video or just download all the project files inside of marmoset